One of the best meteor showers of the year peaks and Saturn makes its closest approach to Earth. Let's take a look at what you can go out to see and image in the night sky for August of 2023. I'm Michael Martin and this is Late Night Astronomy. Whether you're a casual fan of space or a veteran stargazer, everyone loves a meteor shower, and we've got one of the best ones of the year coming up in the form of the Perseids this August. All you need to know is when and where to look to go out and enjoy it. So let's load up my favorite astronomy app, Sky Safari, to see where you need to look to get the most out of this shower this month. The Perseids can produce a rate of 50 to 75 meteors per hour under dark skies and come from the remnants of the comet Swift-Tuttle. To see them, go outside around 11 p.m. on the night of August 12th and look towards the northeast. There you will see the constellation Perseus, rising into the sky where these meteors appear to be emanating from. The later you stay up into the early morning of the 13th, the better the show will get as it rises higher and higher into the sky. Thankfully, the moon will be almost completely out of the way for the peak of the shower this year, so try to get to as dark of a sky as possible. Don't get frustrated if you don't see meteors within a few minutes. The Perseids is an impressive show, but you're going to want to give yourself at least one to two hours to really soak in all that it has to offer. The moon, in all honesty, can be a frustrating target for those of us who enjoy hunting down faint, fuzzy, deep sky objects. But we shouldn't be too hard on it. It's still a beautiful target, and regardless of whether you want to avoid the moon or see the moon, let's begin August by taking a look at the phases of our closest neighbor, beginning with a full moon at the very start of the month on August 1st, followed by a third quarter moon on August 8th, new moon on August 16th, first quarter moon on August 24th, and a second full moon, also known as a blue moon, ending out the month on August 30th. The moon pairs up nicely with some of the brighter planets, with Saturn early in the morning on August 3rd, Jupiter on August 8th, and a close but tough to see approach to Mars low to the horizon on the evening of August 18th, right after sunset. For some of us living in North America, the moon will actually move in front of a bright star called Antares in an event known as an occultation. This is going to be pretty low to the horizon from where I live on the East Coast, but those of you in the central portion of North America will have a better view of it. I'll leave a link to a website called In the Sky that will have a map to help you figure out if you can see this event or not from where you live. The moon is also one of the best ways to start your journey into astrophotography. All you need to do is hold your phone up to the eyepiece of your telescope to try out taking pictures and video of the beautiful lunar surface. If you're able to take any pictures of the moon this month or any other object in the night sky, please be sure to share those pictures with me over on Instagram at Late Night Astronomy. As we say goodbye to Venus and Mars that we've been enjoying in the evening sky over the past few months, we begin to say hello to Jupiter and Saturn as they get into more enjoyable observing times as the month goes on. Let's begin, however, with the inner planets, focusing on Mercury, Venus, and Mars in the west right after sunset. Venus quickly drops below the horizon at the start of the month, with Mars and Mercury still being low targets in the west until the end of August. Venus will now begin to climb in the east before sunrise for the next several months, but is difficult to observe during August. The main event, however, this August is our closest approach to Saturn in an event known as opposition. During this time, the Earth moves in between the Sun and, in this case, Saturn, putting us at one of our closest points to this planet for the entire year. August through the fall is going to be your best opportunity this year to see or image the ringed planet. Nice views of Saturn will begin in August around midnight and only improve as it moves higher into the sky. 
Our closest approach to it will be around August 27th, but views will continue to be impressive before and well after that opposition. I plan on viewing Saturn this fall between 100 and 250 times magnification, depending on the conditions of the sky, how turbulent the atmosphere is, and how high Saturn is up in the sky. If you're looking to image the planet, I've got a tutorial on how I go about capturing and editing pictures of Saturn, and I'll be sure to leave a link to that in the description below. Right behind Saturn is the king of the planets, Jupiter. This one continues to be more of an early morning target with the best views coming after 2.30 a.m. in the east, with our opposition to this planet not coming until early November. Uranus is right behind Jupiter for the entire month, and our farthest planet, Neptune, follows behind Saturn. If you're able to get out to observe or image any object in the night sky this month, please be sure to share your observing reports and experiences with all of us in the comment section below. As we leave our solar system behind and travel into deep space, it's important to remember that getting away from as much light pollution as you possibly can, like we mentioned earlier for the meteor shower, is also going to be key for this portion of the video when you're trying to hunt down to see or image, in many cases, faint deep sky objects. That also includes making sure that you're out not when the moon is going to be in the way. We begin this month in the constellation Cygnus with a target that in my experience is only going to be visible for those of you doing astrophotography. Right near the star Deneb is where you will find the North America Nebula. I have never viewed this object visually, but shooting it with a CLS light pollution filter using my Samyang 135mm lens brings out the beautiful faint details of this emission nebula that covers a part of the sky larger than four full moons. Frame it right to catch the Pelican Nebula as well when you're trying to image this beautiful target. Staying in Cygnus, let's move over to the Veil Nebula. The Veil Nebula reveals the ghostly remnants of a star that went supernova, and it is a sight to see, particular with larger telescopes and darker skies. Try using a light pollution filter when observing this one. I found good success with an O3 filter for this specific target. It really helps it to pop out of the background of space, adding some much needed contrast under my light polluted sky. In terms of astrophotography, I used a CLS light pollution filter and was able to capture over three hours worth of data of the Veil Nebula, making it one of my longest exposures of any part of the night sky I've ever taken. And I was thrilled with the end result after using Deep Sky Stacker and Pix in Sight for post-processing. Let's go from two fairly dim targets visually to a great target for binoculars or a small telescope, the Dumbbell Nebula. This oval nebula was the first planetary nebula ever discovered and is a favorite of mine to view during the summer months. I was fortunate to be able to image this target from a newly designated International Dark Sky location at Natural Bridge State Park in Virginia. Under Bortal 2 to Bortal 3 skies, I was able to take this long exposure image of this incredible target floating in this dense section of our Milky Way galaxy. Those are just some of the incredible things that you can go out to see in the night sky for the month of August. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it and consider subscribing to this channel to join our growing community. But most importantly, let us know what you're going out to see an image and anything that you would add to this list for others to go out and enjoy in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from late night astronomy.